changed. The current operation. The other one is uh, this country is facing huge threats from terrorism within the country and outside Al Shabaab, Mungiki, drug preachers. What is your plan for more efficient intelligence gathering? Should it be approved? The other question is, uh, as you said earlier, most of the cases of breach of security in this country needs do have information and they give the motion to security agencies. What is your plan to strengthen the existing coordination mechanism between NIS and other security organs, especially lower administrative structures like counties, sub counties, and even world level? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Haji. Now this is Freddy Kana, Member of Parliament, Shinyalu. I have uh, a quick question. One of the most, one of the emerging security threats to this country is tax evasion. And I think the president has been on the forefront in trying to fight these people who are evading taxes and avoiding their share of national duty in developing this country. I want to know if this committee approves you to be our next head of intelligence. What strategy do you have in place to support the president and of course uh, the, the nation in addressing the issue of uh, tax evasion. Then finally, I've had a look at uh, your, uh, your CV, and I must say I'm uh, impressed with the meteoric rise in positions of, uh, on, on promotions. But of course, out of curiosity, I see between 2015 between 2013 and 2016, you were promoted three times. And uh, some of the promotion actually came in a span of less than six months. So just out of curiosity, maybe just to clarify to myself and Kenyans, to what extent that uh, uh, this will be attributed to your good family name, and of course, uh, connections, and influence. I think uh, the, the last question, Thank in you. all fairness, is, is, is extremely un unnecessary. And I will I guide that you did not respond to that. Honorable Ume, please. Thank you, Chair. And uh, once again, I'd like to congratulate the nominee. Um, I've been following the good work you did at, uh, throughout your term at the office of uh, DPP, but the office you intend to, or the office you seek to occupy currently, is an office that in the eyes of the public has lost a lot of trust. And uh, there are many cases of EGK, especially the extrajudicial killings. And myself, from where I sit, my uncle, I lost him to EGK in 2019, and up until now the case has never gone anywhere. So how do you intend to address these issues, especially to regain the trust in the eyes of Kenyans? Thank you. And just as a writer, so that uh, Honorable Canada doesn't feel that I was a bit harsh on him, is that you're a member of parliament. Tomorrow your son shall not be denied an opportunity to be a member of parliament merely because they carry the Ikana name. So I think that it, that is, is on that note, and I don't want us to escalate beyond that. Point, that. Point, point of order, Mr. Chairman. You know, some of these questions we are asking not on our own behalf. We are asking because the people who are asking, some of the people we are representing, are ask, have those questions on their mind. But you so it's only good that it is clarified. It is a criteria that Parliament uses uh, during you. this voting, and I'm sure you had seen it earlier. Uh, academic qualification and the rest, you are aware of them. Those people are not aware of them. Proceed. Thank you, Honorable Chair. And I would want to first of all correct uh, Honorable Ikana, I was not promoted three times consecutively. Uh, please uh, look, at the, look at the CV properly. Don't confuse holding different offices, being transferred from one office to the other uh, as being promotions. That, those are not promotions. 
uh, I held different offices uh, in different departments under the same level. Uh, so I was never, and I have never been promoted. Uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, I believe I am a man uh, who is uh, self-made, but I thank my late for creating a foundation for all of us, and that is not a crime. I think it is something that I'm proud of, and I'm not going to hide that I'm the son of the late Honorable Muhammad Yusuf Haji. <coughs> um, on the issue of emerging threats, uh, and you're talking about tax evasion, I think um, as NIS, again, what we will do is provide timely intelligence uh, that is well analyzed uh, and that will add value and that will be intelligence that is actionable, which means KRA can use it uh, to recover tax evasion or taxes that have been evaded. Uh, and I think uh, that is be the best thing that NIS can do. Of course, we will also try to leverage on technology um, um, to ensure that we are able to um, give the capability to the government uh, to, 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 to get the required taxes so that we can be a country that is self-sufficient uh, to carry its own uh, um, um, uh, uh, economic activities uh, effectively. Uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the question by Honorable Abdi, um, two areas that can be changed. Um, I, I think I had tried to expound on the gap between parts of Kenya, that we have a part of Kenya that is well developed, uh, that is in the 21st century, uh, that is dependent on technology, and we have parts of Kenya that are behind. There is no infrastructure. The kind of threats that we are faced with are traditional old threats. Uh, are not new emerging threats that other parts of Kenya uh, are doing. And what I would want to do as uh, director, if given opportunity to be the director general of NIS, I'm sorry, I think I'm very eager to <laughs> and forget, but uh, if, if, if I'm confirmed uh, in this honorable house, um, uh, I would want to reconfigure NIS to be fit for purpose. What do I mean fit for purpose? Uh, I mean that we should have a national intelligence service that can, you know, transcend these two continuums. One that is in the 21st century and another that is in, uh, you know, in the, in the 20th or 19th century. Um, uh, and the threats are varying and different. And the best way we can do this uh, is to ensure that we are able to leverage on technology. Yes, there has been a lot of concentration on cyber threats. Uh, we have had a lot of cyber attacks, uh, but we must be able as, or, as NIS um, to forestall those attacks. And one way of doing this is, for example, being, having the capacity of not only defending ourselves. I think for a long time we have been concentrating on, on how best we defend ourselves against uh, such threats. But also thinking outside the box of how can we also be offensive? Uh, how can we have capabilities that allow us uh, uh, to go beyond um, um, and, and, and do activities that other uh, nations are able to do? Uh, one other thing um, that I would want to put to, to deal with the other with the other side of the, the, the other side of the country is being able to collect human intelligence intelligence from the ground, because if you have a place that doesn't have infrastructure. There's no way you're going to wholly depend on technology. If you look at what happened in, in Iraq, for example, there was an intelligence gap by the U.S. that depended wholly on um, technology to gather intelligence. So what I'm saying is that we will have to have the human resource that is so diverse that we can be able to go and collect intelligence from a cultural wrestler somewhere in, in, in West Pokot or Sambul. That we don't have officers who are sitting pretty with suits and looking at computers and laptops, uh, yet we have a, a, a problem, a huge problem, 
uh, in, in another part of, of the country that requires us as an intelligence service to posture differently. Uh, what I'm saying is that as an intelligence service we will be forward looking. We will be proactive. We will ensure that uh, we, we go to the ground to collect the requisite intelligence that would add value to our national security. Um, <clears throat> um, I think there was a question by Honorable Umi. Uh, oh, 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 sorry, Honorable Lawyer first. Um, Sloyer. So, Sloyer. Honorable Sloyer. Sorry. Sloyer. Sorry, sir. Honorable Sloyer. Um, on the issue of partnerships, uh, I think partnerships are going to be critical, and it is one of the planks that we're going to have to work with. Uh, when I was in the ODPP, I was elected uh, the vice chair of the National Council on Administration of Justice. Uh, because of the input that uh, I had put in helping the Chief Justice in building synergy and coordination and collaboration within the criminal justice system. Uh, I was also elected as the President of the Eastern African Association of Prosecutors uh, because of uh, the partnership that ODPP managed to bring between um, Kenya and other Eastern African countries. Uh, um, so partnership is going to be key. Uh, and there is no way as NIS we are going to be able to work. For example, the threat of terrorism requires us to work in concert with other nations, uh, both regionally and internationally. So the issue of partnership is going to be key. Uh, and we are going to ensure that we leverage, of course, the underlining... Um, uh, what we are going to place importance on is the kind of cooperation we are going to undertake, we are going to evaluate it. Does it add value to our national security interests? Uh, if, they, if they do, then we will engage. We will place our national interests first. Uh, um, so partnership on the chair is going to be key and it's something that we are going to strengthen uh, in NIS. The question by Honorable Umi on EJK. First, I want to um, um, uh, um, I'm looking for the right word, uh, but to condole with you and say sorry for the loss of, of your uncle. Um, of course, EJK is uh, unconstitutional. Uh, it is illegal, uh, and it is something that, uh, hopefully, if given this chance under my leadership we will not condone or entertain. Um, um, we have, uh, even under ODPP, undertaking, undertaken quite a number of investigations to investigate those people who have been involved in EJ case. Uh, but we have also prosecuted quite a number of police officers uh, who have been found guilty of extrajudicial killing. In fact, under my, my tenure, we were able to bring quite a number of cases, over 150 cases against police officers, uh, rogue police officers. Of course, this is not to say that all police officers are rogues. There are usually elements uh, uh, within the police that have to be dealt with because if they are allowed to continue, they dent the image of the police and the government itself. Um, and on those occasions, together with the uh, independent Policing Oversight Authority, we were able to bring over 150 cases uh, and we were able to get quite a number of, of convictions against uh, police officers that were brought. And it is during my, my tenure also, um, <clears throat> Honorable Chair, that we were able for the first time to bring a case in court against what we call uh, command responsibility, that it can no longer be tolerated that only junior police officers are being arrested, yet those seniors who gave them instructions uh, one, uh, do not take responsibility. So for the first time as the office of the ODPP, we have brought cases against senior police officers uh, who are involved in, uh, uh, in killings of innocent uh, Kenyans. Um, Honorable Chair, of course, uh, the bills of rights under the Constitution is very clear, uh, and as... Uh, the nominee, 
and hopefully if I'm, I, if I'm given the opportunity, I pledge to this committee that I will observe them and ensure that NIS operates within uh, the confines of the Constitution. Thank you, Honorable Chair. We'll take from Honorable Vice Chair. Honorable Kalev, not, yes. not really a question, Chair, just okay. a further clarification. I just wanted to get a clear clarification from the nominee. Uh, earlier on, you said uh, the four petitions that were filed against you, were they withdrawn or, uh, or did you subpoena the court? Thank you. There were, there were actually 20, 20 cases and they were all withdrawn. There is, a, there is one that was a, that was a, a petition. Not, there's a difference between petition. All petitions were withdrawn and all cases in court against me were withdrawn. Uh, and I did not petition. It is the petitioners themselves who withdraw. Uh, there is one petition last week, I think you, you must have seen by uh, Transparency International, that was taken to the Public Service Commission. Uh, I think that is the only one. The Public Service Commission is yet to communicate to me. Okay, Honorable uh, Vice Chair. Thank you, Honorable <coughs> Chair. Um, uh, some of my questions probably much later will touch on in camera. I'm sure we have exhausted for the next phase probably as the chair directed if you go to on camera, we'll be able to do it. But uh, first, uh, congratulations, Nudir, for the nomination uh, and the trust that the president has in you. Uh, most of the things have been covered, but uh, one aspect is about the mandate of NIS uh, calls for a high degree of dependence on the organization's dependence. If approved as the DG, how will you balance this between cooperation with the executive while maintaining the agency's autonomy, impartiality, and commitment to national security? Uh, the next one, and I'm sure you have talked about, is the issue of uh, UMIT, that is the human intelligence. And uh, I'm sure you reckon that NIS has become too elitist. Too elitist. Uh, that is our observation, and I'm sure most Kenyans believe so. And as you said, most parts of this country are not, are not equal. There are ones in 21st century, others are in 20th and 19th century. And uh, how are you going to revamp that aspect of being too elitist, even in where elitism is not required? The other aspect is uh, some on a rider that uh, Honorable Omi has mentioned. Um, you know, as per the National Security and Article 238 of the Constitution, requires compliance with the law and is in relation to the issue of uh, extrajudicial killings, especially cases related to terrorism. How are you, if approved by this committee and the National Assembly, are you going to deal with compliance of this, especially your institution complying with this law? Thank you. Please combine with this uh, last one from Nebongare. Chair, Chair, I actually didn't want to follow up that time so that every member gets a chance to ask. But I didn't get an answer of what you have done so far in the issue of prolification of small arms, especially in the north and the career valley. And there is also something else that you have said, maybe a clarification, that your office, in terms of the withdrawal of cases, had no capacity to actually ascertain the, the credence of the documentation that was submitted to you, and you relied on trust. So how then did you figure it out eventually? And what does that mean to the cases that were not withdrawn, that some even got convictions? Does that put it uh, now to the balance of the credibility of the cases, which could even be more? than the ones that were withdrawn. Proceed, uh, Mr. Haji. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, um, uh, the question by the Vice Chair on uh, uh, how we will relate uh, with the Executive, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I think the Constitution is, is very clear. We have uh, the National Security Council uh, where um, all the members happen to be the executive, uh, but um, NIS also has the, the, the National Intelligence Council uh, that oversights it. It has membership there. Uh, but of course, it's 
itself, uh, sorry, this committee itself uh, is envisaged under Section 65 uh, of uh, the NIS um, as trying to bring balance uh, so that it is not a complete executive affair of the executive. Um, I think as much as NIS is, is an independent uh, uh, um, organ, independent in the sense that uh, uh, it's supposed to uh, give uh, intelligence and it's supposed to be apolitical, uh, it is still part of the executive arm of, of government. Um, I think the most important thing is being able to observe um, 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 the constitution from uh, you know, issues of chapter, chapter 6, uh, ensuring that uh, there is integrity in what we are doing um, and, and, and uh, the balance is actually brought about by the, uh, uh, the different oversight bodies that, that, that exist. Uh, as a NIS, we will ensure that uh, the intelligence uh, we, 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 we produce uh, is appropriate, accurate and timely and that it adds value and that uh, it is not there to be used um, for the benefit of any um, uh, arm of government over the other. Uh, and I think um, from the question I can discern that uh, the fear is um, the util NIS being utilized to uh, sort out political issues. Uh, what I want to say is that I, I assure you uh, that NIS will uh, continue being professional um, and, uh, and ensuring that the intelligence that is uh, uh, produced is actually used for the benefit of the national security of this country. Uh, in any case, the constitution is very clear uh, that the mandate of uh, NIS is to collect security and uh, counterintelligence. Uh, the issue of human, I think, uh, I'm sorry if I sounded like I was saying NIS is too elitist. Uh, I think in NIS we have an array, uh, but we can still, uh, as, uh, we can still be able to build on the diversity of the human resource that we have uh, so that it, it, it reflects the threats that we are likely to face. Uh, and and, and in, in that way, uh, I think the recruitment processes will have to be looked at in terms of uh, who are we targeting. Uh, we will have to target a cadre um, <coughs> that uh, is, is, is professional in terms of uh, uh, the requirements and the professional um, gaps that we need to fill in, uh, but we will also have to have a cadre, as I said earlier, that can be able to cover the different facet of this, of this country. And this therefore means uh, maybe we will have low, uh, low cadre in the sense that we might have to recruit people who uh, finished Form 4 and we should not maybe um, confine ourselves to individuals who um, um, only had diplo who only have diplomas and degrees. Uh, so in that way, we will try to cast the net much wider uh, and get a bigger spectrum of, uh, of, of our population. Uh, on, on the issue of EJK, um, I think, uh, first of all, I would want, um, and I hope it is not uh, controversial, but uh, the cases that I have dealt with uh, when it comes to EJK, uh, um, there, there are maybe just one that I can think of where uh, officers uh, from uh, NIS have been mentioned. Uh, most of the other EJK cases uh, cannot really be attributed to NIS. Uh, but that is something um, that uh, I want to say. Because NIS plays a critical role, especially in multi-agency um, formations and teams, uh, and uh, tries to add value, uh, in, in how um, counterterrorism is, is being dealt with. I think what I want to commit myself with here is that uh, we shall ensure um, that at least the input of the NIS uh, is to safeguard the human rights of each and every Kenyan. Uh, and the Constitution envisages whether you're a criminal or not. Of course, there are certain instances where if it is combat or, or, or something that uh, the force that has been used is commensurate with the threat. That is something that then can be explained. Uh, but what I want to commit myself here is that we shall be um, an institution that observes the constitution and uh, the human rights of each and every uh, individual. 
on the issue of proliferation of, of some small arms. Um, I think in relation to the work that I was doing under counter-organized crime, um, prol proliferation of small arms fell under what you call the, the internal um, division, not under COC. However, maybe um, what, what I can address is, if I'm given the opportunity, probably what, what I can do. Uh, and, 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 and with this, I think um, <clears throat> uh, being able to have uh, an array of uh, um, possibilities of collecting intelligence will be, will be important. But pr a lot of the proliferation of small arms occurs within our borders. I think uh, as, as um, Director General, uh, as, um, if confirmed as Director General of NIS, uh, <clears throat> we will have to ensure that uh, we are able to um, cover this, these areas adequately uh, through uh, collecting of intelligence, as I said, hu human. Uh, and a lot of this can actually be attributed to the fact that we, uh, the arms are coming in in these areas that have no infrastructure and then finding themselves into, into Kenya. Uh, but also international cooperation and regional cooperation will be key uh, to ensure that we are able to deal with the uh, proliferation of small arms. Uh, regional instability uh, has meant that uh, there's a rise in this. Uh, with the instability in Sudan, in South Sudan, in Ethiopia, already in Somalia that we have had to live with for a long time. Uh, this is likely to go up. Uh, but as I said, we will try and configure ourselves in such a way that we can be able uh, to surmount this problem. I think one, one of the roles of NIS, uh, which I would also want to enhance, uh, is being able uh, to forecast the future uh, and gear ourselves to threats that are like, likely to, to, to come up. And the uh, proliferation of small arms is one likely threat that is going to grow, and it will be a problem for us. I sometimes say uh, we are in the wrong neighborhood. Uh, we are a strong, democratic country uh, um, that is uh, relatively peaceful, uh, but we have very unstable, in a very unstable neighborhood. But that actually means uh, that we must redefine how uh, we deal with the threats uh, that are likely to come to us. Um, on the issue of uh, documents and the credence, this came about by affidavits from the officers themselves. They came up, wrote, and said uh, that there's a problem here, and they pointed out what, the, what those problems are. And that's how we were able then to review the cases, withdraw them, and actually what we have done is we've taken all those cases back to the DCI to reinvestigate and give us a final um, um, uh, uh, view of how these cases should either proceed or the files being, being closed. We have not closed the files. What we have done is we have returned so that they can be reviewed and that, ev those ev that, that evidence can be tabled to us. Which means, when an officer has tampered with the documents, then they will, uh, the, the, the files will come back and will prosecute those officers. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I think after this far, you've really tried to stay uh, very professionally responsible, particularly on issues that I would have initially thought would have touched on the core mandate of national intelligence without necessarily divulging much of the operations that are sensitive and classified for that matter. So unless there is a member who has a question that will warrant the media to leave, then you can raise your hand and as I do that, let me also say that, uh, because I've not been able to ask a question, but let me give you in a form of a comment, that uh, there has been a multi-agency um, team before uh, that comprised some officers from the National Intelligence Service that were used uh, to execute political assignments. Um, I have been a victim personally, um, but I'm not, that, that I'm not saying that you go after them. All I'm saying is that uh, um, if this uh, committee accords you favor, try as much as possible to remove the officers who taint the name of a very professional uh, national intelligence service. Make it as professional as, as possible. Um, debunk 
the mystery that surrounds uh, intelligence uh, gathering and uh, and officers of intelligence, uh, people who are in hot pursuit of politicians or senior people or just ordinary people, should not be in your service. Let you, you have your professional service link from the political class, execute your job of gathering information and giving intelligence to the head of state and uh, for the betterment of our country. Uh, secure our borders, that is one of your jobs, make sure that there's enough in, uh, in, information for any form of extremism, um, for any religion, and that is the um, advice that I will, or something that I will want to add to what my honorable colleagues have, have uh, said here. So, Honorable Musi, if it is a question that is classified, I can ask the no, Mr. Chair, it's uh, just to answer on what you've what you passed, and uh, my opinion, Chair, and if members agree, I think if the nominee is passed by this committee and the House, he will be able to answer sensitive questions while in office. But for now, I feel like we've exhausted. If members agree, we should leave it at that. But having said that, no, it's not a question, it's just a comment. The, the nominee, Chair, is very well placed, having served in this before, and having served in your current capacity as ODPP, you indicated that you now know the gaps between intelligence and actioning that. Uh, Chair, if the nominee is passed by this committee, it will be very good for you to bring legislation that can seal these gaps. That will be your first assignment if you are passed by this committee. Thank you. So, Mr. Nordin Haji, I'll give you the one, three, four minutes to still give your final remarks and your final plea for this committee to consider your <coughs> nomination favorably. Please proceed. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, first of all, maybe on the issue that, uh, that you raised, uh, I have often uh, wondered why uh, Section 66 of the ODPP, I mean of the NIS Act, uh, has not been operationalized, and that's a complaints uh, board. Uh, I will go and look at uh, why uh, there has been delay. Maybe there are val valid reasons as to why um, there have been delays uh, to operationalize it. Um, but I think. That would be one way of ensuring that when there are complaints like this, uh, these officers can be dealt with uh, adequately. Uh, what I want to assure this uh, committee uh, is that I will strive to ensure that uh, NIS uh, observes the constitution and the rule of law um, and that um, uh, we actually um, discharge our mandate within the constitution and the constitutional frameworks that, uh, that, uh, that we have. Uh, and if confirmed, um, uh, I want to assure you, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, members, uh, and Kenyans uh, in general, um, that I will try and ensure that NIS uh, is a professional, efficient, effective organization guided um, by high fidelity uh, to the constitution and, and the law. Um, I also want to commit myself uh, uh, to ensure that I uh, work very closely with this committee uh, as an oversight committee uh, for, for, for Kenyans in general. Uh, so please um, rest assured that uh, I, I will avail myself in person uh, unless um, there are any uh, um, um, reasons why come and uh, uh, ensure that you effectively discharge your mandate. Honorable Chair, I want to thank His Excellency the President for giving me this opportunity and for this committee also uh, for being very kind uh, and uh, uh, allowing me to uh, answer the questions and even attempting to give a long <laughs> uh, opening statement. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, uh, and I look forward uh, to working. God bless. 
Thank you, Mr. Haji. Um, I can promise you that this committee is non-adversarial. We will be very ob objective in evaluating your suitability uh, as the next uh, Director General. We will uh, soon retreat uh, uh, to write a report, an extremely objective report. These people are uh, very professional. And I just uh, hope that they accord you that favor. Before then, I can only wish you all the best. You might leave it your pleasure. Just for the record, for the members of uh, the press, it is that uh, DPP Haji has given us all the statutory requirements. We have all of them here with us, and none has been left out. Thank you, Mr. Haji. You might leave at your pleasure.